Start again on the evening of uh, uh, Tuesday evening. Um, a member of the public um, located what he believed to be a bone on uh, Maslin Beach. Uh, he took that home, and uh, um, uh, one of his relatives uh, has some medical training and believed it may have been a human bone. It was presented to us yesterday morning. Uh, we've uh, uh, worked with our partners at Forensic Science SA, and we suspect that that bone uh, is a human bone. Uh, which is um, uh, relatively recent in the scheme of things, um, anything up to a couple of months, up to a year old. Uh, the bone that we, was located was a forearm, um, we believe. Uh, police came down here yesterday and conducted a preliminary search. Um, during that search we located a second bone. That bone has also been examined by Forensic Science today and we believe that bone is also um, a human bone as well, being a rib. We're currently conducting an investigation um, and uh, search of the area with regard to any other evidence that which may be there. Um, and we are being assisted uh, by our partners in the um, uh, State Emergency Service uh, with an evidentiary sweep of the beach to, to determine whether or not there are any other human remains. Do you feel, oh, sorry. Oh, sorry. At this stage, we believe, uh, we, we, uh, we suspect that these are human bones and they are currently under assessment by our Forensic Services uh, partners. Uh, to confirm exactly uh, some of the detail, I suppose, that you'll be asking me. Um, at this stage, uh, we're asking anyone um, who uh, finds any bones along the beaches of the southern beaches, uh, particularly Maslin Beach, Seaford, uh, Moana, um, Southport, and Port Nalunga. Uh, if you do locate them, please call 131444 and the police will come out and make an assessment. Um, if you have any information in relation to any missing persons, uh, then please call Crime Stoppers and we'll follow them up and get in contact with you. Um, there are um, many people over the years that uh, go missing for a variety of reasons. Um, at this stage, um, obviously, we're uh, following up with a number of longer term missing persons uh, that we're aware of and contacting their families as well. Um, if anyone else uh, in the area obviously finds any bones on the beach and the like and want to know what to do, um, in the first instance, like I said, on those beaches I nominated, Maslins, um, uh, Moana, Seaford, Southport and Port and Lunga, please ring 131444. Uh, all this, else, just make an assessment as to what you believe it is. If it is an animal bone and we find quite a lot of them along the beach due to fishing, uh, then please leave it at that. But if you believe that it, uh, it does relate or it is a human bone, then please ring the police. This second bone that you found yesterday, do you know yet what part of the body is it? The first one was a rib. Bone, believed to be born, so this was a rib yep. yesterday. Yep. And if, just judging by that, have you been given an age by... No. No, so a lot of the details we know in relation to this will come out with the forensic testing, um, but at this stage um, we're only going off the preliminary advice we are receiving from our forensic partners, um, and that's why it's incumbent on us uh, to conduct a search of the beach to actually make sure that we collect any other evidence that may be there. Do you believe the forearm and the rib belong to the same person? Uh, we don't know, in the sense that uh, once again forensic testing will determine that. Scott, you mentioned initially um, the forearm that was found, you believe it's from a person or an animal um, that has died with yeah, so from our forensic partners, they, they suspect it is a human bone, um, it's a human forearm, um, uh, but at this stage we are determining as to what that is. We do find a lot of bones over the period of time, um, and we certainly do find uh, ancient bones as well. The advice is received that it's not an ancient bone. Talk us through the search effort today, how many people are out here? Yeah, so today we, uh, we have about 30 people out here, we're assisted by at least 10 members of our uh, State Emergency Service partners um, and we're assisted by the uh, STAR operations who are coordinating the search as well as water police and forensic response people. And the forearm out again tomorrow? Uh, at this stage we'll see what happens with the search here today. Um, as you can see the search is fairly um, uh, you know, a long period, of, uh, period. Um, but at this stage um, yeah, we'll determine that afterwards. And the forearm and the rib, are they roughly the same age? Yeah, so we don't know that with regard to the age. That will be determined with um, forensic testing. But I mean, you, you, how long yeah. have been? Yeah, we can't tell. That's the problem. How long you it? No. How long will it be until we know those details, though? How long will that forensic testing take? Okay, so the forensic testing is currently being done by our forensic partners, um, and we'll have some preliminary results over the coming days. We don't have an exact time frame on that. Okay, so we've been here for a good hour or so already. We'll probably be here for another hour or so going forward. It really depends on what gets turned up into the search today. In terms of where the bones were found, were they near each other? So the, where the forearm was found and the rib was found, are they yep. in the same vicinity? Yeah, so we believe they're within probably the, you know, the same 50 metre radius um, of where they're located. 
Uh, you would have also seen today potentially that there was another bone located on the beach. That is an animal bone, it's not human. Were they buried in the sand or on the sand? Uh, on the sand. You mentioned that there were missing people that you were looking over. Uh, have you managed to like narrow that list down as to who you suspect it might be? Uh, and this is the thing, with, with, with uh, human remains that gets uh, uh, discovered by, by members of the public, um, a lot of those people aren't actually uh, reported missing uh, by their family or loved ones. Um, and we have uh, obviously remains that get located of people who don't actually live in the area as well. So we've had a lot of uh, cases around that. At the moment, it really is a preliminary stage just to do the evidence, evidentiary sweep and then we'll do the forensic testing and have some more information to be able to make those decisions. Speaking with those missing families, I mean, there's a lot of anguish that goes along with missing persons cases. What would those families be feeling right like now when you do make that call to them and let them know that their bones have been found? Yeah, so it, it's certainly. Um, uh, gut-wrenching for the families um, and, uh, and um, I think that uh, any loved one who, who uh, you don't know where they are and you don't know what's occurred to them um, would be everyone's worst nightmare. Um, we have a number of long-term missing persons down uh, this, uh, th this end of the city um, and we made endeavours and contacted those families prior to actually speaking to, to yourselves. In the search today, people are in the water, they're standing around the areas, how much ground do you yeah, so probably about a kilometre at this stage um, and it'll be obviously low tide is the beach and then uh, we've got water response in the water just doing those, low, those shallow areas. What are you hoping that forensic testing will show? Will, it, will you be able to ID who the bones belong to from the forensic testing? Yeah, so th that's the thing with regard to you know, uh, DNA testing and those sorts of things. Um, at this stage it's a matter of just extracting what information we have there and then letting the forensics people do their, their thing. Talk us through um, low tide and the tactics about searching it, searching now during low tide. Yeah. So um, obviously low tide is one of those things where you've got a, um, a tide mark which the water goes up to. You can see on the beach behind me, uh, you'll have um, a seaweed along the beach that's high tide, and then the tide goes out. Obviously, if we're searching at high tide, then it makes it very difficult because we're wading through water. Um, so it's just one of the tactics that they use with regard to, uh, to searching, um, and it certainly provides us the best opportunity to be able to cover the area. What? Um, Well, they provide um, specialisation with regard to land search um, and uh, they partner with us with that um, and also the ability to be able to actually get boots on the ground. And what difficulties do you have searching at the beach? What are some of the things that I guess can make it difficult or why is it different from other places? Yeah, well obviously certainly the heat and uh, the ocean environment is very complex um, so a lot of the time the evidence is not obvious. Anything else guys? And that's the thing we don't know. So we need to actually, first of all, identify what we've got and then work back from there. We've got no information about that at all. And just lastly, just yeah, sure. do you believe this is suspicious at all? Uh, no, not at this stage, because we can't rule anything out. Um, all we've got is those two bones, and then we need to work it from there.